Welcome to session six of Go Go Nippon, my first trip to Japan. Alright, let's jump right into it. This is another one where I might get interrupted if um, Scarlet needs me to go and take care of her. Otherwise, let's get going. What? What's wrong? <laughs> to tell the truth, I really need to hit the John. Is there a public restroom somewhere in the area? Oh, come on. I told you to take care of that before we came here. I'm not proud of it. Oh, well, unfortunately, the Japan shopping districts don't offer a lot of public restrooms. What? Seriously? Then what am I going to... We don't have a choice. We'll have to mo do with this area. The This area? But, but with all these people here on the streets? I hope we won't have to resort to that. Uh, but I'm not sure I can hold it in for much longer. Uh, what should I do? <laughs> huh? Sorry, it's just a joke. A joke? Then what? Uh, but there really aren't many public restrooms around here. But it's okay, we can use the one in the combini. In the combini? They really are convenient. Yes, if you ever need a restroom in the city, you can always go to the combini. The arcade could be another option. I see, I'll have to remember that. But anyway, let's hurry to the toilet. Oh, please. I feel better. Oh, that's right. I forgot to mention. There's some convenience in the shopping districts that won't let you use the restrooms as a crime prevention measure. Measure. Be sure to keep that in mind. Gah? Why didn't you tell me that earlier? Well, they let you use it. So what's the problem? That's true, but still. More importantly, come on. It's time to go. This way. Hey, do you remember the name of the street we're on? Huh? I think it was... Sunshine... 60 Sunshine, actually. Yes, the Sunshine 60 Doherty. That's the reason it's called that. Whoa. Whoa. This is... The Sunshine 60, the crown jewel skyscraper of Ike... Ikebukuro. Wow. It really is tall. Is it called Sunshine 60 because it has 60 floors? Bingo, that's absolutely right. The Sunshine 60 was built in 1978. At the time it was built, it was the tallest building in East Asia. Unfortunately, it's further down the list nowadays. But it's still quite tall. Way up there. Yes, it is. I know, as long as we're here, you want to go inside? Inside? Are you sure? Am I sure of what? Well, isn't it an office building? Ah, don't worry about it. There's shops and public spaces inside, too. Plus, on the top floor. I can't believe there's an aquarium in Sunshine City. Are you shocked? Totally. You've also got stuff like a planetarium, a theater, a museum, even a shopping center, and a theme park. It's like an arcology. That's what it reminds me of those um, things in SimCity. All that? Then you could spend a whole day just in Sunshine City? That's the idea. Wow, I see. Hey, look at that! That fish has a funny face. Uh-huh, it sure does. Looks a bit like you. Heh, <laughs> my face doesn't look like that. Heh <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, look over there. You can see an ocean sunfish. You really can. It's been a long time since I've been to the aquarium, but it's nice to come here every so often. Yeah, it is. I can't believe we're looking at fish this high in the air in the middle of the city. <laughs> now that you mention it, it is strange. Yeah, I wonder how the fish must feel. How the fish must feel. Hmm? Hmm? You know what people say? They say they feel sorry for the fish in aquariums and the animals at zoos crammed into these little spaces. They say it's wrong and they should have more space to move around in. But sometimes, I wonder if that's really true. Akira? When you think about it, from the point of view of a fish or animal, what do they care about the size of the world outside? Living in the wider world means you're caught up in the cruel cycle of life. You might get eaten before you can grow to full size. You live in constant fear of death out there. Sometimes, I think it might be nicer for them to live in these tanks, where they don't have to worry about natural predators or finding food of their own. Maybe it's just another form of happiness. 
And it's not as if the animals in Zoo's Aquarium stuff are missing, right? If they don't know about it, the world in right now is the entirety of the world, don't you think? Do you know the Japanese phrase, the frog in the well knows not the ocean? No, no. It was originally a Chinese phrase. It means that you live in a small world, you know nothing of what it means to live in a larger one. But if a frog has lived in a well his whole life, what does he need to know about the world outside? That's what I think. Akira. What am I doing? Just babbling on about stuff again. Sorry, don't mind me. But, but... Seriously, let's go further in. Looks like there are sea otters and penguins up there. Sure. Oh, those penguins were adorable. Yeah, they walk so funny. They really do. The otters are cute too. I feel so satisfied. Freezing. But I never expect to see anteaters in an aquarium. Heh, <laughs> there's an anteater who keeps escaping. He's kind of famous for it. Wow, really? Anyway, I'm getting a little hungry. Want to go get something to eat? That's what I've been waiting for. I've been starving since we were in the aquarium. Because you were watching the fish? Haha, <laughs> now that you mention it, maybe so. Oh, please, you're hopeless. But anyway, I wonder where we should eat. Is there anything you're in the mood for? Me? Hmm, I want... What do you recommend? Hmm, there's a type of food associated with Ikebukuro. What is it? Ramen, of course. Ramen? You mean noodles? Yes, they're originally a Chinese dish, but Japanese people evolved it in another direction, so become practically the national dish. There's violent competition among ramen shops in Ikebukuro. They call it Ramen Wars. Ramen Wars? That sounds kind of dangerous. But see, look, there's one there and over there, see, here and there, all ramen shops. I see, with that many shops around, it really is eater be eaten. I know, right? For the more popular shops, you might have to line up for half an hour to eat there. Anyway, let's ramen. That's a strange turn of phrase. Hmm? You're looking at me funny. Nothing. I always look like this. I see. That's true. Hey. Anyway, I'll follow you. Haha. <laughs> Here, this way. I don't know if they're going to talk about it. But, uh, when I was in Hawaii, I learned that uh, ramen at a restaurant is nothing like the ramen you buy when you're a poor college student in a little box. It's actually extremely good. Let's see if they mention it here. Whew. We had to wait a while, but we're finally inside. Rashiyamase! Whoa, what a loud voice. Isn't it amazing? The force of greeting is one of the shop's trademarks. Anyway, we'd better order. Oh, this place uses meal tickets. Meal ticket? Yeah, you see that vending machine over there? You buy a ticket for what you want to eat there, and take it to the man on the counter. There's a vending machine in a restaurant? That's right, they're pretty common in Japan. It's funny, I wonder if they're going to really take to the whole thing that we're starting to do in some McDonald's around here where you order um, on your phone and then go pick it up. And I've heard of other places doing similar things. It seems like they already had that over there, only it's not, you know, through your cell phone. Wow. Anyway, maybe we should stick with standard ramen today? Sure. Now, give the ticket to the man at the counter. Ramen, huh? I wonder what it'll taste like. Omatase shimasita. Something service when they bring you food. Whoa! This is ramen? This is long noodles like pasta floating in a bath of hot soup. But it's not like minestrone either. It's supposed to slip up the ramen while it's hot, blowing on it to cool it down. I have burned my mouth quite a few times in Hawaii doing that. Slurp it? Yes, make a lot of noise. I know it's hard for foreigners, but for Japanese people, slurping noises is the proper way to eat noodles. That's the second time I've been told that. I see. Anyway, let's hurry. Itadamasu. Woo. Ooh. Slurp. Mmm. This is. How is it? Um. Slurp. Slurp. <laughs> I guess I don't even have to ask. Slurp. 800 yen for one bowl of ramen, huh? Wow, that was great! It was so delicious! You seem happy. I'm glad. I can see why ramen's become a national dish. I know, right? I've got to eat it again while I'm in Japan, if I get the chance. Anyway, as long as we're out, would you like to walk around town for a bit more? Sure, that sounds good. 
I know it's a bit far from here, but there's a temple where they hold a festival for a goddess called Kishibojing. Long ago, she was a fearsome monster who would kidnap and eat children, but the Buddha saved her. She took a maternal form and became the goddess of childbirth and child rearing. Wow. Eh, I thought we were going to spend more time out there. Hey, yaki -chan. What's for dinner tonight? Hmm, tonight? I was thinking of making curry rice. Yay, I love your curry rice, yaki -chan. I do not like Japanese curry. I like uh, Indian curry, Thai curry, Japanese curry, not so much. Curry? Isn't that Indian food? Well, curry originally from India, but it came to England from there. It came to Japan from there, and Japanese people reformed it to suit art their palates. Reformed it? I guess I've changed a little from just a few days to Japan. The same could happen with food coming to another country, too. Curry, too, and pizza and pasta, of course. French, Chinese, Asian food, East and West, Japanese people eat food from all countries. And they incorporate them all aggressively into their own food culture. I have an image that Japan is all about sushi and tempura and sukiyaki. But Japanese people really eat a wide variety of food in their daily life. By the way, curry's up there with ramen as Japanese, Japan's national dish now. Yes, my brother will definitely agree if he ever comments on this video. National dish? That's right, curry rice, curry bread, and even soup curry. There are many variations. I don't think there's a person in Japan who doesn't like curry. Wow, curry is really that popular? But among those, curry rice is the king of kings. Everyone loves it, from children to adults. Just hearing about it makes me hungry. Doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Hey, haki -chan, let me help you out, okay? What? You want to help? Sure. You, you don't have to. I can make myself. You talk to him while I'm making it. But you make dinner every day. I feel bad. Please. You don't have to worry about it. You don't need to worry about it either. But what's wrong? It's not like you to be so dissembling. I don't even know what that word means. But, but it's just... What's wrong? My Koto's asking to help. So let her. I know she said that Akira was a better cooking, but Mak Makoto can't be without skill herself. Mm. Akira? F fine. If you assist, I guess Oni-chan can help with the cooking. Really? Yeah. Hooray! Good luck, Makoto. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, leave it to me. That's right. Maybe I can do something, too. No, you don't have to worry about it. Instead... Instead? You're the one who insists that Oni-chan help out, so you're the one who takes responsibility for the final product. Huh? Responsibility? She jumped right in my face, first time. What's she on about? Anyway. Hey, wait a minute, Aki. Maybe I'll let Oni-chan make the salad. I got it. Responsibility? What's that supposed to mean? She can't... she can't possibly... La 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 la, salad, salad. First, to make the dressing, we want lots of seasoning to make it nice and tasty. First, I'll add salt. Huh? Wait, that's almost the whole bag. That's way too much. Now I add exactly what is this? Oh well, I'll throw it right in. I I can see. This is why Akira was so hesitant. This girl is like, uh. It's comically bad. Like, uh, Kane in Ranma. So when she said responsibility, she meant. Here we go. Itakadamasu. I. Itakadamasu. Here you are. I worked hard on the salad, so help yourself. Sh sure. Ah, and you won't want to put. You want to put on my special dressing. Thanks. In other news, what is this? Salad? I see some long, tortuous strands of something sticking out from the bowl. And this dressing, it's unnaturally bright green color. Please, help yourself. Mm. <laughs> but it won't get eaten if I just stare at it all day. Uh, it, it masu. Here we go. Yeah. How is it? De Deli? Deli? Mm -mm. Oh. Mm. What the hell? Did she, like, freaking poison him? I'm sorry, I thought I did, did a good job today. 
she thought she, that was a good job. Anyway, at least Akira didn't let her get involved with the curry at all. That curry was really delicious. I guess I now know to leave the curry in Akira's hands at all, all times. I'll make sure to do that from now on. Anyway, at least it's over now. Hey, Oni-chan, do you remember what we talked about before dinner? Oh, yes I do. What? What did you talk about before dinner? About that he's only got three days left in Japan. We have time to make the trip, wouldn't we? That's true, because I'll be going home in four days. That's right, but I was thinking maybe you'd like to go somewhere a little further tomorrow. Somewhere further? I guess maybe this is how they make the game so you'll replay it, because maybe now I can't go to all the cities I could before. Yes, obviously, there's still a lot of places you haven't seen in Tokyo, but... As long as you're in Japan, we thought you might like to see some place outside of Tokyo. Some place outside Tokyo? Like where? Eh, a place no traveler outside Japan should be without. Yeah, there's only one place. Ah, are you talking about... Yes, Kyoto! Kyoto? Kyoto, I would like to go there, but... But... What, do you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem, but I don't know a lot about Kyoto, and even if you want to go tomorrow, I don't even know how we get there. Oh, is that all? Don't worry your head about it. Yeah, we'll go with you. Huh? You mean, both of you? Of course. I don't even gotten out with both of us, but we want to go on this trip. Yes, I've been to Kyoto many times before, but this is a special opportunity if you're going. I see. I would never think of going by myself, but having them would be reassuring. Okay, in that case, let's take a trip. Hooray, then it's settled. Yeah. I know it's sudden, but maybe we should make an overnight stay in Kyoto. We'll take care of reservations, so you just get ready for the trip. Got it! Kyoto, eh? This should be fun. Hehe, <laughs> yeah. It re it's a really sudden trip, but I did come all the way to Japan. Getting to look at a lot of different places is one of the joys of travel. Kyoto. I wonder what's waiting for me there. This should be fun. I wonder if it's Kyoto, or if I'm fine pronouncing it the way I am. Who knows? Day four. Now then, are you two ready? No, oh, I'll be. Now then, are you two ready? Yeah! What? Check! Change of clothes? Check! Okay, in that case, our one night, two day stay in Kyoto. Let's go! Now, as for our itinerary from Tokyo to Kyoto, we'll get on the Shinkansen from here at Tokyo Station. The Shinkansen? What is it? Are you that fired up about riding the Shinkansen? Of course I am! It's the Shinkansen! The Shinkansen! Not as only the fastest train in the world, it's no I say it's the safest, most technologically advanced train out there! Weird thing to say. Again, tourism board, did you design this? Wow, is that so? It sure is. I mean, I've been really open to ride the Shinkansen at least once. Wow, I'm so looking forward to this. <laughs> I'm sure you are, but first we need to buy our tickets to get on. Sure, let's do that. First, there are several Shinkansen lines when you get out of Tokyo. The one that goes to Kyoto is called the Tokaido Shinkansen. Tokaido Shinkansen, right? Yes, there are also three kinds of Tokaido Shinkansen. Those are the Nozomi, Hikari, and Kodama. That's right, the Kodama stops at every station. The Hikari and Nozomi only stop at the important ones. They're special express trains in every sense of the word. Between the two, Hikari takes shorter stops at each station than the Nozomi. There's about 500 kilometers between Tokyo and Kyoto, the Nozomi makes the trip in about 2 hours, 20 minutes. 2 hours and 20 minutes? That's even faster than I thought! By the way, all the trains cost the same amount, so if you're gonna go to a major station like Kyoto or Osaka, it's better to take the Nozomi. I see. Now, about the tickets. To ride the Shinkansen, you need both a boarding pass and a special express ticket. 
Then you'll choose between free seating or reserve seating. Hmm. Hmm. A boarding pass, an express ticket, then free seating or reserve seating. One way ticket. One way free seating ticket to Kyoto is about 1300 yen, but a round trip ticket's a little cheaper than each way, so it's best to go with a round trip for your boarding pass whenever possible. Round trip. Got it. I'll remember that. Now, to buy in Japanese JR stations, there are ticket counters called Midori no Maroguchi, with vending machines in the larger stations. You can also purchase tickets at travel agent counters in some stations. If you go with a travel agency, you can sometimes buy them in a bundle with hotel reservations at a discount price. Wow. Alright, Oni-chan, when we go to Kyoto, make sure our seats are... I got it, on the right side, right? Yeah, you always know what I'm thinking, Oni-chan. Seats on the right side? Why? I bet it's to see the mountain, but maybe the mountain's not there. We'll see. Mount Fuji, that is. Because... Because... Nope, I'm not telling right now. You'll see soon enough. What? Now you've got me curious. Tell me. No way. Feh, <laughs> then Makoto. No way, Oni-chan. Don't tell him. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Huh? Now, first we'll buy the tickets, then we'll get our bento and board the train. Mm-hmm. <coughs> First we'll buy the tickets, then we'll get a bento and board on the train. We're buying bento before we get on the train? Of course. Long ago, they had a restaurant cars on the Shinkansen itself. But as the travel times got faster and faster, they stopped doing that, because there was less need to eat slow mail on the train. So sort of, <coughs> in place of that, 
They started selling special bento in the larger stations, known as Ikiben. And that usually contains the region's specialty food. Eating on an Ikiben while, while chatting with friends and watching the scenery pass is part of the fun of a train ride. Yeah! <laughs> in other words, it's a way to make the trip itself special. That's exactly it. It's not just the mode of transportation, but a part of the journey. This is getting really exciting. So we just bought our bento and got through the gate. Now we wait for the Shinkansen to arrive. Shinkansen, Shinkansen. <laughs> You're excited as a child. <coughs> but... Ah, it's here! Look, look at the train. I know Dan and Dave got to ride on one of those. Whoa, that's a Shinkansen! Yes, it's the newest model, the N700. It's the real thing! It's like a perfectly streamlined form. It's like a smart train! It's amazing! You can tell it's fast just by looking at it. Well, it's worth noting that since the trains first started running, the trip to Tokyo has been reduced by nearly one hour. An hour?! That's completely amazing when you put it that way! I wonder how hard they must have worked to shrink the time by an hour. Come on, it's fine for you to be excited. Don't space out or the train will leave without us. So, have you calmed down a little? Huh? You're insane. I've been calm the whole time. Please. You're insane as my line. You've been spazzing out since we got on the train. Now we've been on the train for 40 minutes and you've been spazzing out the whole time. I am not. <laughs> Don't say you're not spazzing. <coughs> I wonder if there's actually a word for that term in Japanese. Come on, let him be. There's nothing wrong with him enjoying himself, right? Yeah, I mean, this is totally amazing. These seats are so comfortable. You can recline them so far. And even though we're racing through at 300 kilometers per hour, I don't feel the slightest vibration. Each seat even has its own power outlet. You can even connect to the internet. I can't believe how fast Japan is with the stuff like this. See, you're completely spazzing out right now. <laughs> now, now, enough of the flirting, you two. Huh? We're not flirting. Really? From my point of view, it looks exactly like flirting. That's why I'm telling you, we're not. It's gonna sound like you're protesting too much. Nope. <laughs> Come on, Oni-chan. You're always quick to say such strange things. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, hmm, it's about time. Ah. What? What's about time for what? Remember earlier? I asked for seats on the right side of the train? You're gonna learn why very soon. Ah. It's in sight. You two, look. Ah. See? It's a mountain. That's Japan's greatest mountain. Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. That snow-crested peak. That gentle slope. So peaceful and solemn, but with such presence. How can I describe it? To just call it beautiful feels almost trite. It's 3,776 meters tall, the tallest attractive mountain in Japan. <laughs> huh? Active volcano? Mount Fuji is an active volcano? See, that's a volcano. Yes, it is. Its last eruption was about 300 years ago, and until 15 years ago, they thought it might have gone dormant. But when they learned it was still active internally, they reclassified it as an active volcano again. That's an active volcano? They say the last time it erupted, the ash reached all the way to Tokyo. So far. When we looked at the earlier data, we see that Mount Fuji's eruptions have no set period, but the longest storm period was a little under 300 years. And as Oni-chan said, the last eruption was 300 years ago. That means it could... Oh man, if this suddenly becomes like, an, like a freaking volcano game, that's going to be so crazy. Erupt any time, yes. There are various theories as to why it's called Mount Fuji. While well, it's certainly near the word Fuji is unique, while well, it is undying. Some theorize the name stems from Unique Mountain or Undying Mountain. Hold on, hold on. An Undying Mountain. Yes, that, exp that explanation posits that as an active volcano, the ancients thought of it as a living mountain. A living mountain? Nope. Say, can you climb to the top of Mount Fuji? Yes, you can, although you can only get halfway up by car. Past that, you need to climb on foot. Generally speaking, lodges on the mountainside only open in the summer, around July and August, so if you want to climb it, you need to go during that period. <laughs> I see. Mount Fuji, Japan's greatest mountain. Someday I'd like to climb it for myself. <laughs> Thank you for riding with us today. Kyoto, Kyoto, please be sure to have your belongings with you when you disembark. They went to a new city. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, ah, we're here. This is Japan's oldest capital, Kyoto. Kyoto. 
Kyoto was Japan's capital for over a thousand years until it was changed to Tokyo in 1867. Alright, mommy's calling you, baby. Go. And it's time for me to leave for dinner. So let's save. We will save over the top spot. And close up. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.